Hello, San Diego. My name is Peter Miller. I'm a documentary filmmaker, and I've had the honor of sharing a number of my films with audiences at the San Diego Jewish Film Festival over the years. Uh, I've had the pleasure of coming out from New York, where I live and work, uh, to share my films with your audiences. And it's always been such a joy, such wonderful conversations, and an opportunity to share uh, stories with the community there. In this new virtual uh, film festival programming that we're doing, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about uh, a film that I think speaks to many of the themes that are present in so many of my movies. Um, oh, I've shown Jews in Baseball, An American Love Story, AKA Doc Pomus, Refugee Kids, One Small School Takes on the World, uh, and a number of other films. Most recently, uh, Robert Shaw, Man of Many Voices, a film about a wonderful choral conductor. Uh, the film I wanted to talk about, which I showed a few years ago at the festival, is called Projections of America. And it really is a film about the power of filmmaking. Uh, hang on a second. Here is this movie, which is still on a DVD, which um, I love DVDs and I wish they still were being used all the time because it's so nice to hold a movie in your hands. But that movie, which we showed on the big screen out there, is a movie about the importance and the power of using film for good and using films to help shape an understanding of who we are and, and what we can be. Way back in the beginning of the Second World War, a um, filmmaker from Hollywood named Robert Riskin, he had been a screenwriter uh, who wrote many of the great scripts for Frank Capra, including It Happened One Night and Meet John Doe and Mr. Deeds Goes to Town um, and any number of, of legendary movies. Riskin, a Jew working in Hollywood, a fabulous screenwriter, um, was profoundly worried about what was going on in Europe and wanted to contribute any way he could to the war effort. And the way that he could was through storytelling and through filmmaking. Uh, and he, you know, making things up as we went along because nobody had any idea how to harness the power of, of film uh, during the 1940s in fighting against you know, the wave of tyranny and fascism and Nazism that was happening overseas, Riskin had an idea. And the idea was to create a filmmaking unit within the Office of War Information that would make movies for newly liberated audiences overseas. Not films for American audiences, but films about America for overseas audiences to explain to them who we were as Americans. And bear in mind that as America was liberating territories during the war, you know, as we cross the channel and go into Normandy, the people who are receiving our soldiers uh, don't know who we are, uh, worry that we're just another occupying army. They'd been under the occupation of the Nazis for some years. And along come this new occupying force. And the goal here was to explain and share through this amazing medium, which was cinema, uh, who these Americans were who are now in your land and, and who are going to be a part of your life. A lot of people in, in Europe in particular didn't know much about America except maybe what they got from Hollywood. So they thought we were all a bunch of, you know, gangsters or, or, or cowboys or, you know, people who weren't necessarily uh, what really reflected what Americans were. So Robert Riskin assembles a team of the greatest Hollywood talent and the greatest documentary filmmaking talent, uh, sets up a studio in New York City and promptly commissions 26 short documentaries oh, 10 or sometimes 20 minutes long, uh, meant to explain what kind of people we were. You had a movie about a cowboy, but it wasn't a movie about, you know, shoot 'em up cowboy getting into battles with people. It was about a guy who raises livestock and the hard work that he has to do in order to put meat on the table for, for Americans. And the story is told by having a young British schoolboy go out to Texas and meet this guy and follow him around. Uh, there's a film called Tuesdays in November, which was about voting. It was a little short film about how we vote. And the beautiful thing about that movie was that it wasn't about, uh, you know, flag-waving democracy, this is how we do. It was about problems. 
people vote. They don't necessarily like what the results are. They have to live with it. It's a lovely film about kind of the reality of the messiness of democracy. Uh, there was a film called The Autobiography of a Jeep, a first-person account of what it was to be a Jeep from the point of view narrated by a Jeep, uh, you know, who at first has self-esteem issues because he's this ugly little functional car, uh, and then realizes what a fantastic and important role he has in aiding the U.S. war effort. A movie about a window cleaner who cleans the windows on the Empire State Building. Uh, and it's beautiful and magnificent, but the story of these soaring skyscrapers is told through the story of a guy who straps himself onto the windows and cleans the, the windows and who is behind the scenes making one of the great cities uh, in the world work. Uh, these movies are disarming and they're beautifully made. I think my favorite among all of them is called The Cummington Story. The Cummington story takes place in a little Massachusetts town. It's a little town where uh, you know they live by very traditional ways, and then somewhere in the midst of the war, refugees move in. Refugees from Europe getting away from the horrors of what was going on over there. And this is, again, not a film that waves flags and says, aren't we great? We learn early in this 20 minute long film, which is beautifully made and has a score by Aaron Copeland and is just lavishly and beautifully filmed. And, and it takes us into this town where the people don't welcome the refugees and where they are suspicious of them and don't want them shopping in their stores and participating in their life until as the story progresses, they start to recognize the humanity of these refugees living in their midst. Uh, they start doing woodworking together. They start playing music together. And before long, the townspeople realize that these refugees from Europe, who are Jewish, though the film never says so, uh, the refugees from Europe become a part of their town. And when the film ends and the refugees are returning to where they came from, uh, the people in the town are disappointed. They want them to stay. And it's a lovely film about the process of welcoming strangers, something that this country uh, ought to do and has done well over the years and alarmingly in recent years has turned its back on. I mean, this is a country that should be receiving refugees now and welcoming people to our shores and, and well, you know, opening our arms to those who are unfortunate enough to have been caught up in war zones or, or, or terrible situations. And this movie from 1944 is a fabulous demonstration of how people can change their minds and be their best selves and how America can live up to its promise as a place that is made up of people from all over the world. Projections of America is a movie about how these movies got made and how they got put to use. We meet people in Europe who saw these films, you know, when they were kids, because the only people who are around anymore who would remember seeing these things on the movie screens are people who are well into their 80s. And somehow, with my producing partners from Berlin, who I worked with on this film, they were able to track down some older people who had seen these films. And these folks appear in Projections of America talking about their first impressions of what America meant to them and how they got it from these short films. You know, I make documentary films and the power and the beauty of this, of this art form is that it allows you into the lives of other people in a way that you ordinarily might not have the opportunity to go. We're privileged to be able to talk to interesting and, and fascinating people who have lived interesting and fascinating lives. And our films bring a small piece of that to the movie screen or, or onto television so that we as an audience can collectively be a part of an experience that we might otherwise have the, uh, the opportunity to engage in. And here, in really an early, early format of documentary making, when the equipment was bulkier and um, when not everybody had a camera on their phone, um, this team of wonderful filmmakers figured out how to turn documentaries into a force 
of understanding and community. The very last film they made in this series of 26 films was a film about the new United Nations that at the end of the war offered so much promise. And it's this optimistic film about the possibility of nations coming together. I think that documentary has the ability to provoke us, to open our minds, to introduce us to new people, to take us on a dramatic ride. And in Projections of America, I had the chance to tell the story of people who were using documentaries 70 something years ago um, for much of the same way that we're using them now. Uh, and it was really a joy to share it with the audiences in San Diego, where I think it actually won a best documentary prize, but more important, where it got people to think, what kind of country are we? What kind of country do we want to be? And how do we define ourselves in the world? And this is something that we should be thinking about now and can be thinking about now, even in the midst of all kinds of crises. We should never stop thinking about how we want to be as a country and how we want to be understood. Thank you for watching and for allowing me to be part of the film community in San Diego and stay safe.